Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Habib Ahmad and today I'm going to show you how to determine the activation energy of dopants in semiconductors. First of all, let us try to understand what is activation energy. In case of n-type semiconductors, we know that we introduce a donor energy level close to the conduction band. On the other hand, for p-type semiconductors, we introduce an acceptor energy level close to the valence band. Now, activation energy for n-type semiconductors is the amount of energy required to move an electron from the donor energy level to the conduction energy level. Or we can say that activation energy for n-type semiconductors is the energy difference between the conduction band and the donor energy level. On the other hand, for p-type semiconductors, the activation energy is the amount of energy required to move a, an electron from the valence band to the acceptor energy level leaving behind a hole or resulting in the generation of a hole in the valence band. Or in other words, we can also say that for a p-type semiconductor, activation energy is the energy difference between the acceptor energy level and the valence energy level. The activation energy of dopants in semiconductors can be determined using Arrhenius equation. Here is the generic form of Arrhenius equation. K is equal to A e to the power of minus E A divided by R T, where K is the rate constant, A is the pre-exponential factor, E A is the activation energy, R is the gas constant for a chemical reaction, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. So here is the generic form. Now I'm going to show you how to write it for dopants in semiconductors. For n-type doping, we can represent it in this form. n is equal to a e to the power minus e a divided by k b t, where k b here represents the Boltzmann constant. And generally, we represent the activation energy in electron volts or in milli electron volts. So the value of KB over here is also going to be in electron volts per Kelvin. Its value is 8.617 into 10 to the power of minus 5 electron volts per Kelvin. Or for a p-type semiconductor, we can uh, represent it in this form. Now, assume an n-type semiconductor. Uh, this equation over here can be rewritten in this form by taking the natural log on both sides. Now natural log of n is equal to natural log of the pre-exponential factor plus natural log of this value over uh, here. Uh, we know that natural log cancels out with the Euler parameter over here. So now our equation reduces to natural log of n is equal to natural log of a minus E A divided by K B T. <coughs> Excuse me. Our natural log of N is equal to natural log of A. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, minus E A divided by K B into 1 over T. Uh, we separate this uh, variable over here. The inverse of temperature. Uh, now this equation looks similar to the equation of a straight line. Which is Y is equal to M X plus C. Uh, C corresponds to natural log of A and M over here corresponds to the activation energy divided by the Boltzmann's constant and X corresponds to the inverse of the temperature. Where M is the slope of the equation and C is the Y intercept. So it means that if we plot the natural log of the carrier concentration, which would be electron concentration for an n-type semiconductor, versus the inverse of temperature, it's going to result in a straight line, which will have a y-intercept, and it's going to have a slope uh, represented by Ea divided by the Boltzmann's 
constant. Um, we can also rewrite the same equation over here in this form. Natural log of n is equal to natural log of the pre-exponential factor minus the same parameters, but now we multiply and divide it with 1000. So now uh, the slope is going to be Ea divided by the Boltzmann's constant times 1000 and the independent variable would be 1000 divided by uh, temperature in Kelvin. Why do we do that? Uh, we do this because 1 over t over here is going to result in a really small scale. So we are trying to, to expand the scale a little bit and compensate for that by introducing 1000 in the denominator of the slope. <coughs> so uh, the way it works is that uh, we keep in increasing the temperature and measure the carrier concentration corresponding to these temperatures. Uh, then plot the carrier concentration as a function of 1000 divided by temperature in Kelvin, which would result in a straight line. And the slope of that straight line would give us the activation energy. So this over here is equal to m or the slope of that straight line. Uh, then it's really easy to determine the activation energy from the slope. The activation energy is equal to slope times the Boltzmann's constant times 1000. And I'm going to show it to you with the help of an example. Uh, here is an example. Here is an actual experiment that we performed at uh, uh, Advanced Semiconductor Technology Facility. So let me tell you a little bit about the background of this experiment. Um, I did my PhD from Georgia Institute of Technology. My advisor is uh, Dr. William Allen Doolittle, a wonderful person and a great researcher. And we tried to achieve p-type doping of aluminum nitride. Aluminum nitride is a wide band gap semiconductor with a band gap of 6.2 electron volts. And until then, researchers were not able to achieve p-type doping of aluminum nitride. It's not easy to achieve p doping of wide band gap semiconductors. Uh, and since aluminum nitride has a huge potential in high power devices, so uh, we were working on different ways to achieve p-type doping of aluminum nitride. And finally, we were able to achieve that, which was a breakthrough result, resulting in a lot of other uh, hugely funded studies as well. And then we wanted to determine the activation energy of uh, the p-type aluminum nitride uh, film. By the way, we used beryllium as a p-type dopant for aluminum nitride. So we sent the sample to Lakeshore Cryotronics and we varied the temperature in the range of 325 to 475 Kelvin and measured the corresponding whole concentrations for this temperature range. Now we know that in order to determine the activation energy, uh, we would plot carrier concentration, which is this column, versus 1000 divided by temperature in Kelvin, which is this column. So here in this Excel sheet, I'm going to plot these two columns. Click on insert. So I scatter and I'm going to format the x-axis. I don't need it from 0 to 3.5. So we can see the plot now. And I click on the plot and then I right click. And I'm going to add a trend line over here to this plot making it exponential and display equation on the chart.
and then I don't need it further so I'm going to close it let us drag it over here and let me increase the font size of this equation so now it's y is equal to um, the pre exponential factor when e 17 times e to the power of minus slope times the independent variable um, I can rename y to n or in fact this is whole concentration so I'm going to rename it to p is equal to 1e17 times e to the power minus uh, 0.425x where p is a uh, whole concentration this is the pre exponential factor uh, this value over here the 0.425 corresponds to the slope as we already discussed um, and we know that in order to calculate the activation energy from the slope uh, we multiply the slope with the Boltzmann's constant and then with 1000 so I'm going to do the same in the Excel sheet over here our slope is 0.425 the activation energy is equal to slope times the Boltzmann's constant times 1000 and it results in a value of 0.0366225 or we can say 0.037 electron volts or we can say 37 milli electron volts so 37 milli electron volts is the activation energy uh, for our sample of uh, beryllium doped aluminum nitride films and then we can go ahead and plot it in origin as well um, and here is the final, final form of the equation p is equal to the pre exponential factor times e to the power of minus activation energy which is 0 0.037 37 milli electron volts divided by kt so this is how we calculate the activation energy of dopants in semiconductor i hope this session was useful for you and i'm going to post more exciting videos like that uh, like this one in the future as well please stay tuned till then take care and i'm going to say it in my native language which is pashto um, or adios or goodbye take care